If we don't understand that process, if we don't understand its function, the ebbs and flows, if we don't understand where it's coming from, why it's there, what its value is, what its purpose is, then we tend to just judge ourselves as got it, lost it, got it, lost it, got it, lost it, right? Or I'm so happy right now and I did something stupid. I'm so happy right now and I did something wrong. But if you understand the process, it's actually a very natural part of integrating all that you've learned. Everything, <clears throat> everything in the universe, everything in the universe um, explodes and then implodes, expands and then coalesces back into nothingness. And very similarly, since we are inseparable from this universe, since we are inseparable from this existence, this cosmic glorious celebration of infinity, we too experience those ebbs and flows, those expansions and implosions. Or so what is its purpose on a very human, human spiritual level? What is its purpose? What is the purpose of having those peak experiences of expansion and flow and acceleration? And then suddenly, ooh, nothing seems to happen. Or you just don't feel as good. Or you wonder where that flow went because you were doing everything right. You were effortlessly riding the waves and then suddenly it just stopped being there. So you start questioning yourself, perhaps. To this day, I experience those ebbs and flows. And my conclusion is that it is a natural part of the human's way of integrating all the new realizations that it gains on the spiritual path, all the new experiences that it gains. It needs to integrate that. And so those valley experiences, as I prefer to call them, rather than ups and downs, peaks and valleys, those valleys are integration periods. And when you recognize that you're hitting a... Um, you're hitting a valley experience, a valley period. As soon as you start recognizing that, you start calming down about it. You start to accept it. You start to see value in it and utilize it effectively rather than judge it or despise it or frustrate yourself about it. So you can just imagine this as an upward line that then dips in a little bit, plateaus, and then it goes up even further than the last peak, and then it dips a little bit again. Doo -doo -doo. But the third valley is higher than the first peak that makes sense. And I think you've noticed that. Like if you look back upon your life two years two years ago, you would rather have your valley experience today than your peak experience then. At least that's the case for me. And I'm assuming for some of you that's the case too. You wouldn't want to be yourself two years ago in your peak experience. Would you really want to go back there? Even if you are experiencing sort of a hibernation period at present, maybe you are in the valley moment right now, even then, would you really want to go back two years to your peak experience then? Do you really want to be that person again? Would you really want to be at that stage again? Most likely not, I'm assuming. So this just keeps going up and up and up and up and up. But why doesn't it just go straight up, right? Eager human beings as we are, prone to self-judgment so easily. Why doesn't it just go straight up? Why does it have to make that little dip? I don't want to make that little dip. Let me transcend that little dip. Let me somehow figure out a way to not have that little dip. But again, if you look at anything in nature, anything expands and comes back into its source. And so when you have those peak experiences, they are usually the expansive experiences. They're usually the expansive period of your self-realization. They are the further awakening into more of yourself, more of your truth, more of your essence, more of your authentic self, more of your oneness self, more of your expression itself, your individual self, whatever it may be. There's many types of peak experiences. They can be very inward or they can be very outward. They can be very peaceful or they can be very ecstatic and blissful. And you feel like dancing, you feel like expressing, you feel like hugging everyone you meet. There's many kinds of peak experiences, depending on exactly what it is that is activated in you in that moment. However, it seems like the natural rhythm of life is to also have that integration period. So now you've expanded into a new vision, into a new view of yourself, a new understanding. And then at some point, it's like the body-mind wants to catch up with that. It wants to be able to integrate that, channel that more properly. It wants to be able to have its body aligned, its its uh, synapses, or how do you call these things in your brain? Uh, rewired 
it wants to catch up with your realization. It doesn't just want you to sort of like go into a spirit level where it cannot come with you. It wants to integrate that here. So you go to heaven and then your body, mind, and your agreement to be human will bring you back down in a sense, will bring you back down so that that can be anchored, so that can be rewired on this level, so that you can bring more and more of your expansion into everyday life, into relationships, into manifestation, into worldly affairs, into your business, into whatever it is. So in those valley experiences, just recognize that you are having one. Just recognize that suddenly this expansive flow seemed to stop or seemed to disappear from view. And first thing to do is to love yourself for that, to appreciate yourself for that, to appreciate the mechanism that that entails the reason why it's there, which is to integrate, to embody the expansive peak experiences that you've had just before that. Now and more and more your life will accelerate and so right now, even in my valley experiences, my life changes 10 times more than most people have in their peak experiences. So, but for me personally, if I am in a valley experience, things seem to go a little slow. Things seem to slow down. Nothing much seems to be happening. Even though I know that's not true from a more objective or relative comparative point of view to who I used to be or where most people are spending the majority of their consciousness. Nevertheless, to me personally, I still have those peak and valley experiences. But that is no longer a negative thing. It's a very valuable learning tool. And the focus shifts. The focus is different. The attention is different. The emphasis is different in the peak experiences than it is in the valley experiences. But both are crucially or equally as potent in terms of furthering your spiritual advancement, your expansion, your awakening both hold these beautiful, hold that beautiful potential for seeing more of yourself, understanding more of yourself. And again, the emphasis is different. The emphasis in the peak experiences is usually more on expansion. It's usually more on moving away from who you know yourself to be, in a sense, even though when it is the expression at kind, not so much the non-dual peak experience, but maybe the expression at peak experience of being more authentically yourself, more fearlessly you, having life flow and accelerate more effortlessly for you. Even in those experiences, it's kind of like you're moving away from where you've always placed yourself. Does that make sense? You're expanding beyond the structure that you've contained yourself within before that time. That's why it feels so good because you're expanding into more of yourself. That's why we could call it a peak experience because it's new for you. It's a new territory that you're exploring. Your zone, your zone of awareness in a sense is increasing, it's expanding. So you become more aware of more of your essence, more of your truth. And so then moving away from your self-defined structure, the natural rhythm of being human for as long as you are human as well, will want to restructure itself according to that new vision according to that new frequency. So it wants to, in a sense, put that expansive state of being into a shell we call the body and into an understanding or a non-physical shell we call the mind. It wants to understand, it wants to penetrate, it wants to be able to apply consciously, it wants to be able to give it a proper place, it wants to be able to align its energy, it wants to be able to change its cellular structure and its DNA and all that. So it wants to take your new experience and integrate that. And that's what those valley experiences are best for. And how can you recognize them? Well, you probably already do, but you'll feel more like hibernating. You feel more like oh, stepping back from life for a moment, resting in your essence, or just not judging yourself. You feel like things are not flowing as well. And you just feel like being around someone that doesn't judge you, which is really just a permission slip or a symbol for you wanting to not judge yourself in that state of being. You just want to be loved. You know those periods where you just want to be loved. You just want to be taken care of. You just want your mother to be there or your whatever it is, your daddy or your boyfriend or your girlfriend. Those are symbols for really what you want from yourself. You just want to love yourself in that state. You want to cherish yourself. You want to accept that this expansion is now being integrated, embodied into the structure of the human vehicle the human instrument, the human conduit. And so all that you, or all that that desires from you is that you hold the space for that, that you hold that loving, unconditionally loving space for that and not judge yourself. And as you do that, you will find great acceleration to be possible 
right away again in that valley experience. Whether that is as physically active as you may have been in your peak experience or ex as expressive, maybe it's not as expressive when you are in that valley experience. Nevertheless, acceleration of a different kind happens.